What's going on traders? Kevin here with Bullish Bears with another exciting tutorial video for you guys. This video, I'm going to be covering how to use the divergence trading strategy. Now, many of you have heard of divergence before. If not, that's okay. I will go over the basics of it. But with divergence, it helps us to spot potential reversals. There are many different ways to use divergence as well. Whether you look for divergence on ES and NQ, ES and VIX, or if you look at options and you're trading SPY and QQQ, you could do that as well. There are also other ways to look for divergence, like looking for divergence on the RSI, divergence on the MACD, and so on. So let's get into it and I'll show you guys some great examples and how to use divergence to find good quality setups. Let's go. Alright guys, for this first section, we're going to go over my favorite way to use divergence, and that's when I'm trading futures and looking at ES and NQ. So I'm going to go over a few examples on multiple time frames and show you guys exactly how they work. So what we have right here is a 30 minute divergence on ES, so ES made a higher low, so we go from this low and we line it up with Either one of these would work, but we'll go with the lowest point on NASDAQ. So we have a higher low on ES, whereas on NASDAQ, and we do have to make sure we line up. You see the crosshair on each chart? We want to line it up with the same candle on the same time frame. So we have NASDAQ created a lower low while ES created a higher low. And what that did was that caused a strong move upwards. And you could also see because ES is the one that made the higher low, that's the stronger of the two. So we would want to go along on ES at that point, And it gave us a really nice strong move, uh, netting us about, let's see, from that point up, a bit over 30 points, which is a strong move on ES futures. The next area we're going to look at is going to be an hourly, and that's going to be right over here. So let's go to the hourly candles, and we're going to look at, do, 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 we're going to see how, again, ES made a bit of a higher low, not too crazy, just a little bit. However, if we look at the NASDAQ, and again, got to be the same candle, so we're going to look at this candle right here created a lower low and again this is a bit of an idea a bit of a clue in the market that there is a bit of a divergence there is a bit of a shift in market structure and what happens here again we get a nice push higher the next one we're going to look at i believe will be another 30 minute and again the 30 minutes can also be seen on the hourly as well so let's take a look at this is a 30 minute, but again, like I just said, it could be seen on the hourly. So I'm going to mark the low of this candle and we see that ES made a lower low, whereas on NASDAQ, same candle, same time frame, 2 a.m. candle. And we have the low, but it created a much stronger higher low at that point. So we would take NASDAQ long. And we would look to get a strong move out of that. Now, if we're looking at the NASDAQ, that would have netted us around 180 points, you know, maybe even 200 points, depending on your entry point and depending if you did want to hold. Um, so, again, it all depends on your trading strategy, but divergence is fantastic for finding areas where there could be a potential reversal or areas where there is a potential for a stronger move in either ES or NQ. Let's see, the next one we're going to look at, again, is an area that could either be a 30-minute, a 1-hour. Divergences are just spotted when ES is making a lower low and NASDAQ's creating a higher low. Or at this, in this case, ES made this lower high and then it made a higher high, whereas if we're looking at NASDAQ, and again, same candle, created a lower high. So NASDAQ would be the weaker of the two, so we would want to short NASDAQ at this point. And look how strong that drop was that we got at that point. It was a really strong drop on ES and NQ, but we would want to short the NASDAQ because that was the one that gave us the lower high. 
Next one we're going to look at is going to be a three hour. Now again, just like supply and demand zones, guys, the higher the time frame we're looking at for confirmation, the stronger the move we're going to get. So let's check this out on the three hour. We see right here that ES continuously made these higher highs, higher highs, higher highs, whereas the NASDAQ was making lower highs, lower highs, and lower highs. And what we get? A really strong drop on the NASDAQ. So again, guys, divergence is a fantastic strategy for finding some type of shift in market structure. We have another one right here on the hourly from, let's see, pop over to the hourly chart, find that one one more time. Now this one was a bit of a close one, so this could probably also be a 30 minute as well. Remember guys, it's all about what time frame we're looking at, and again, the higher the time frame, the better the reaction. So we had ES made these lower lows. Looking at NASDAQ from the same candle, created a higher low, and what we get? We got a bit of a pump there. So let's see if we could find another one. We had the three hour up here. Let's see. And it looks like we have this one right here. Now, this is a good example of why we should be taking ES long if it created the higher low while NASDAQ created the lower low, or why we should take NASDAQ short if NASDAQ created the lower high while ES made the higher high. So right here we had the low on ES and we're gonna bring that to about, let's say, we could bring it to right here. We could bring it to right over here even. I mean, if we brought it to this candle, this one's definitely some divergence there, but let's bring it to right here. And what we see at that point is we created this higher low on ES, and if we look over at the NASDAQ, we created a lower low, right? Even at this point right here, also created that lower low. Even if we look at right here, again, created a much lower low. So it would be ES that gave us the higher low, so we would wanna go long on ES, and you see how much relatively stronger the move is on ES? Whereas if we look at the NASDAQ during ES's pump, NASDAQ was chopping around. So divergence doesn't only give us areas where markets could turn around, but it also gives us clues on which equity or which stock or which ETF or which futures contract we should be trading with the divergence. So for the next category, I'm going to be going over how to use divergence with the MACD and how to use divergence with the RSI. Alright guys, for this section I'm going to be looking at the Tesla hourly chart and to bring up the MACD as the indicator I'm going to use for divergence, we're going to go over to the indicators tab right up here and we're going to look up MACD and we're going to click the moving average convergence divergence. We're going to add that to our chart. If we want, we can move it up, we can move it down, give us some more room, but let's keep it up around here so we could really look for the divergence. So one thing I see is some divergence right here. We have the MACD created a higher low from this point. So you see how we created this higher low while um, the Tesla chart was creating a lower low and what we get we got a nice reversal got a nice strong move we could have swung this trade and we could have netted about let's see how much from that point we could have got about a forty dollar move and again depending how whole how long you hold it for could have even been a fifty sixty dollar move and you know it's really great divergence strategy is a really fantastic strategy whether you use it on macd use it on rsi use it on es and nq divergence shows there is a shift in market structure so let's look for another divergence let's see here we go right away i see that we have tesla is making a higher high right here but the MACD is creating a lower high. So we're gonna mark off where it started and up here. So we had the higher high made on Tesla, 
but the MACD over here created a lower high. And what do we get? As soon as we got that divergence, we got the MACD crossed over and we got a strong push lower. And again, this could have also been a swing trade to net us a good return on investment if you're trading options. Let's look for another example. Let's see, let's see. And this would work on anything, guys. We could go over to the Apple chart, Microsoft chart, and we could just look for any types of divergence to tell us, okay, well, it looks like there could be a potential reversal. So here we have a lower low on Apple, right? So we have all these lower lows. So I'm going to mark this low to this low. But we have on the MACD created a low right here but then it created a higher low on the MACD. So there's divergence right there. And again, it also gave us a strong move higher, would have been a great swing trade. Now, if we were looking at the smaller time frames, we could find some intraday movement as well. So let's look for a smaller time frame divergence. Me personally, I like to look for divergence on the higher time frames. And I'm doing this all freehand, guys, because I wanted it to be real for you guys. Got to keep it real. Let's see. It looks like we got a bit of divergence over here. We have the MACD started to create some higher lows in this area, whereas Apple was creating some lower lows in this area. What happened? We got a nice strong pop, a little bit of a reversal, and a, sw a switch in market structure went bullish at that point. Here we have some more divergence right here, a lower high on MACD, a higher high on Apple. Then we got a bit of a push lower. What else? Let's see. Here's another pretty strong divergence. We created a lower high right here on Apple, while the MACD created a higher high. So we're going to mark that out, and we see that the MACD gave us the divergence, and it gave us a nice little quick move lower. So again, I would much prefer to look for the higher time frame divergence. Those tend to play out better, and you could really get a proper and strong high probability swing trade with those. So the next section we're going to go over is how to use RSI with divergence. So again, guys, divergence is fantastic when using MACD, using RSI, ES against NQ. You could even look at ES versus the VIX. Me personally, I like to look at ES and the VIX when I'm day trading. And if ES is making high of day, I want VIX to be making a new low of day. And if VIX isn't making that low of day while ES is making a high of day, I see that as divergence and a chance that the market might want to either pull back or reverse on us. So let's get into that next section. Alrighty guys, for this section I'm going to be showing you how to use the RSI to spot divergence. First thing we're going to want to do is go up to our indicators tab and look up RSI. That's going to bring up the relative strength index. We're going to use this one right here. And we're going to make a little, uh, little changes to it. So me personally, it gives it a moving average. I'm not a big fan of that. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here and we're going to click the little settings icon on RSI and we're going to go to style. We're going to get rid of RSI based MA, which is moving average. Uh, these others you could sort of keep there. Middle band is this middle 50 band right there. Upper band is that top one. Lower band is that bottom one. And you could always change these depending on what your strategy is, depending on what you're comfortable with, and also experience. Me personally, when I trade with the RSI, instead of keeping it at 70 and 30, I'm more of a fan of keeping it around either 75 or 80 and keeping it around about 25 or 20 for the lower band. I've had a lot more success with that and that's why, but you could have your own experience and maybe like to keep it around 70 and 30. I'm also gonna get rid of the background fill as well. I don't find it necessary. And let's see, inputs as well. So RSI length, it will always start off at 14. 
Again, me personally, I have a preference of liking it at RSI length 10 because it gives us a quicker response to the chart. So we're going to hit OK on that and let's take a look and try to find some divergence. So again, we're looking at Tesla on the hourly chart. So let's see. Looks like we got a little bit of divergence going on right down here. So that's where we have Tesla creating this new low where the RSI is creating a double bottom. So we would mark that off as divergence. And what happens, we got a nice bit of a pop there, a nice bit of a reversal. Next divergence we're going to look for. Let's see, let's see. Let's see. Anything down here? Yeah, we got a bit of a divergence right here. So Tesla was making some new lows, right? Some new lows over here, over here. So we're going to mark that out new lows it's a lower low while the macd created this really uh really deep low around 12 on the macd and let's line it up at the same candle and then it created a higher low as well so what happens at that point we got a bit of a reversal and it pops right back up where else let's look for some more divergence looks like here we have uh, we have Tesla making this high right here, and then it made a new high right here, whereas on the RSI, we created equal highs, double topping, and that gave us a nice strong move lower. Let's see if we got any more on Tesla before we'll hop on over to, let's say, Microsoft, or we could even check out NVIDIA. Anything else? Anything else? Let's see. All right, so we have a here we have a higher high on Tesla right here, whereas the RSI was making a lower high. And what does that give us? A nice reversal, a nice long deep push lower. And this is on Tesla and it brought us from about 197 mark it depending how long you held it could have got 70 80 points on that guys that would have been a fantastic swing trade uh, let's see real quick one more time how many days you would have to hold that for that to really give us a strong nice return on investment right so this would have been about 26 days so you know this would be more of a swing trade or some would even consider this a leap a leap is usually, though, when you hold it for about a month or two. Swing trades are more for a week, two weeks, maybe three weeks. So you would probably have to get a deeper out of the, uh, not out of the money, but a deeper expiration date on these contracts. Let's see, let's see what else we got. Here's another bit of divergence. We created this higher high on Tesla. RSI created a lower high and we got a nice little quick reversal there again about 40 points on that Tesla move and how long would we have had to held that about eight days so again a little over a week would have been a really great trade great swing trade trading options going to give you a fantastic return on investment take a look Here's an example, guys, of the divergence not working out. Now, guys, I do want to mention this because there is no trading strategy in the world that will work 100% of the time. Divergence, supply, demand, support, resistance, 9 EMA, riding the 9, 21 EMA, VWAP, nothing is going to hit 100% of the time. And if somebody tells you otherwise, they're lying to you. Hate to break it to you but there's nothing that will hit 100%. That's why we have to take our divergence, our supply demand. We take all of our strategies and all of our knowledge of trading and really put it together. So what I'm looking at here is RSI made a bit of a higher low and the uh, Tesla made a bit of a lower low. So you would think that's divergence. It did give us a little bit of a pop, 
but then we did continue lower. So something to consider at that point is if we're looking at the top of RSI, RSI is still creating lower highs, so that is still following the trend bearish. So again, got to remember, not every trading strategy will work 100% of the time. It's about having multiple confirmations so you really have a proper and higher probability of that trade to work out for you. So let's say um, ES or NQ, they were very bearish during these days. Then a bullish divergence on Tesla might not be the best trade setup to take. Whereas if it looks like ES and NQ are turning around over here, then this divergence will probably have higher probability. This divergence right here, on the other hand, it was a continuation, right? So we got a little bit of a pop, we got the divergence, and then we continued our bear trend. So it's always good to follow the trend. The trend is our friend. Alright guys, I do hope this video helped. Divergence is a fantastic trading strategy, whether you use it with RSI, use it with MACD, use it with ES and NQ. It's really great to know because it also helps you acknowledge a market structure, especially when we trade something like ES and NQ because then we're really able to tell, are they trading together, making equal highs, making equal lows? Okay, well then if that's the case, I'm going to continue to follow the trend. If we're making higher lows and higher highs on ES and NQ, then we're going to want to go long at the lows and sell at the highs, right? So it's really good to know what kind of market structure we're in, and it's really good to know how to use divergence to our advantage. All right, guys, have a great day. Don't forget to join our Discord community. We go live every single day. I create pre-market plans for ES, NQ. Sometimes I'll throw some equity charts in there as well, so for some good swing trades. Check us out at bullishbears.com. Have a fantastic day and happy trading. Take care, everyone.